I am a psychotherapist. I mainly use the methods of gestalt therapy and transpersonal psychotherapy. They're still rather uncommon in Finland. I usually treat quite normal problems, anxiety, depression, domestic problems, panic disorder, impotence, and jealousy, and various other problems. I will present some images that show these people's emotions. These two images show the emotions people hold inside. Horror, rage, depression, loneliness. A truth that's being denied is how the experiences in utero and during birth affect people. They're being discarded as humbug or figments of our imagination. This image clearly shows what a child feels in the womb. She's getting ready to be born. She enters the tunnel. The snake threatens her and her life. This symbolic entering into the snake's mouth or being crushed symbolizes how some children experience their birth. They're crushed by a monster as it were. It is a crushing experience. About one patient in three remembers the birth experience during extended therapy. How is this possible? According to medical science, our memory centers can't recall the birth. We assume it's some kind of body memory or cell memory. Maybe someday, science will know how we remember this truth, the truth of our birth. The birth experience often activates mystical experiences, such as experiences with monsters or extraterrestrial experiences. There are monsters or someone in pursuit of you. I've been a psychotherapist for some 20 years. In my work, I've come across a vast amount of paranormal phenomena, extraterrestrial experiences and experiences in the mind. And we know that in America, there is a program called SETI, which means search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I would like to launch another complementary program, SSTI, Search for Supraterrestrial Intelligence. This program should be allotted much more funds because finding supra-terrestrial intelligence can be much more difficult than finding it in space. The universe is 20,000 million years old. I'm convinced that there is other intelligent life in the galaxy. Many of my fellow scientists are of the same opinion states Professor of Astronomy Stuart Bowyer of the University of California, a member of the extraterrestrial intelligence project SETI. Bowyer maintains that there could be at least a million planets in the galaxy where intelligent life exists. The absolute limit on the transfer of information is the speed of light. One often wonders what other ways of communicating there might be apart from radio signals, Bowyer ponders, and offers the ideas of telepathy and the fourth dimension. Physicists already, in theory, know of 20 dimensions. Boyer gives us a simple guideline. Let's begin by examining the universe that we already know exists. The universe lives all the time. Life is continuously being created and terminated. The crash of a huge comet on Jupiter in the summer of 1994 serves as a reminder of this. Any one of the fragments accompanying the comet was capable of destroying Earth. In what way could life have begun on Earth 
other than in accordance with either the Bible's account of creation or Darwin's. Our sun is a child of the Andronover Nebula. Five billion years ago, it was a burning ball of fire in the path of a huge body in space, Angora. When it came close enough, it ripped flames off the sun, but didn't incorporate them. This was the birth of the planets circulating our sun. Every sixth planet in our universe is a test planet. It means an improved human race is being developed. The Earth is one of the decimal planets, test sites of two-brained, mid-breathers, salt-based life. Sodium chloride is the information system that produces our electrochemical core. Mid-breather indicates the intensity of our life. Superbreathers live faster. Subbreathers need to get their energy directly from the sun. Two-brained is an indicator of the quality of our intelligence. They say the three-brained have had problems, and the one-brained couldn't create the intelligence needed. This sheds light on the basis of human intellectual development. We have the required intellectual capacity that must evolve to become spiritual capacity with the thought adjuster God gave us. The thought adjuster and our mind together form our soul, which is the primary stage of our ascent into heaven. We are to grow here in matter, continue our growth in the preparatory worlds, and finally, as immaculate spirits, give our Creator feedback on His work. Niitä tähtiläisiä on täällä maan päällä paljon. Muun muassa minä olen tehnyt paljon astraalimatkoja eri planeetoille. Esimerkiksi Siriukselle, koska olen sieltä kotoisin. Olen jälleen syntynyt maahan kaukaa Sirius-planeetalta. Sieltä minä olen tullut. Siellä ovat vanhempani, isoisäni, oma sisareni. Kuulun kolmanteen enkelihierarkiaan. Sieltä synnyin Sirius-planeetalle, sieltä maahan, koska minulle annettiin tehtävä tulla tänne maan päälle kertomaan kosmisista asioista ja elämästä maailmankaikkeudessa. Elämästä, joka on ihmisille mysteeri. Salut 6 and Soyuz 9 orbited the Earth together from June to November 1978. On the 17th of June, cosmonauts Vladimir Kovalyonok and Alexander Ivanchenov sighted a UFO. In space, they held the following conversation about what they had seen. A round object approached us. Our distance from Earth was 30. Our position coordinates were 93 and 70. The object was moving away from our craft, away from Earth, approximately in the direction of 20 or 30. It went under our craft. It was bright white. Then it departed. Can you describe its shape? A ball, like a tennis ball first. Then it grew larger. I never saw an inexplicable phenomena during a space flight 
But on a flight from Washington to Moscow, I saw a strange, clearly triangular object. It was traveling in the same direction as our plane. It was flying at about 1,500 meters, some thousand meters from us. Our velocity was 950 kilometers an hour. And the objects about 1,500 kilometers an hour as it flew past us and vanished. I reported it to the passengers and the crew. No one understood what it was. It was not an airplane, only a triangular, brightly white object. It did not send any message. It was definitely a UFO sighting. Unfortunately, I have no other similar experiences. Other cosmonauts have described seeing such UFO phenomena. I don't really believe in them, even though much is written about it. I've talked to space pilots from the USA and the USSR, but they have not confirmed these stories. One of the KGB's most interesting reports tells of a Soviet army combat operation against UFOs in Vietnam in the summer of 1965. Three missile batteries engaged an unidentified flying object. The UFO returned fire with a needle-thin blue ray. In an instant, the ground radar, launch platforms and all metal objects were reduced to smoldering scrap iron. 200 personnel were killed. The UFO vanished silently into space. I'm Vladimir Ovinsky, chairman of the Samara Ufologist Club and head of the...